Kentucky was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And you know, taking our muzzle loaders out there. Got it all that's done. so much fun. It just kind of. Go, I, got, I, got I got traditions all cleaned. We cleaned them before, after, yeah. right after they we were shot. But clean. obviously, you didn't do a good enough job because I had looked at them, I saw them, and I said, oh, we got to clean these. More your OCD. Hey, He's where so are we going? We're going to the Bluegrass State, I like Kentucky. Bluegrass. We love going down there. We got some great friends, huh? Yes, Ron and Lisa, Hoppy and Susan, us. I mean, it's going to be a fun show. Actually, fun two shows. We got deer hunting. We've got doe management. We've got food processing. processing. I mean, we've got all kinds of things going on these next two weeks. And we had the tremendous honor to turn around and for us as a family, for Ron and Lisa, Hoppy and Susan, for all of us to share, to supply food to the 101st Airborne why they, the you know, families. why they're overseas and, and put food in the freezer and on the table for them. Folks, listen, God bless you all. We salute you all for your Good service night. and, you know, giving of everything that you have given for all of us to have this freedom to shoot our traditions down in the bluegrass state. Yeah, so I'm Vicki. I'm RJ. And I'm Ralph. And this is The Choice. So, we're heading out today to go down to Kentucky with Mr. Ron Rabu and, uh, to start this morning off right, I am currently in the microwave heating up almost five cups of water so I can make almost five cups of hot cocoa. We're gonna go to Kentucky, shoot some deer, lots of deer. But the meat's actually all gonna be donated, so it's okay. It's back to Wounded Warrior Outdoors, so we're doing good and we're gonna have fun. You be a good boy, okay? I'll miss you, my puppy dog. He said, I'm gonna miss you, my puppy dog. Oh, yeah. I am already the big cry baby. Go get me, go get Nani. But the town that the house is actually in, where Ron's house is at, the name of it is Eddieville. Eddieville. Uh, <laughs> it's my town. <laughs> oh, God. So you drive with him. You drive with Eddie. My new home. <laughs> we could arrange it. <laughs> You know, this is my first time going down to Kentucky and really experiencing all that goes into their muzzleloader hunts with Ron, Miss Lisa, Hoppy's going to be there, Miss Susan, and then, of course, my mom and dad. And it's just, it's an, it's an honor to be able to go down there and experience this with especially the three dangerous men, Hoppy, my dad, and Mr. Ron. So uh, I'm excited, but nervous at the same time. You know, for years, you've probably, you've seen us go to multiple same locations year after year. and. And some of them are just friends, they're not even outfitters, and others, well, are outfitters. And the reason we continue going there is, well, number one, success, and number two, camaraderie, and number three, it's like family. This year, we have a whole house full of people, and this is the first year that RJ gets to head down to Kentucky with us for the muzzleloader hunt. I mean, when we go down there, we know we are gonna have a lot of fun, we're gonna do a lot of laughing, but we're also gonna fill a lot of freezers. Ron has got his management plan intact and he knows exactly how many bucks, how many does he wants to take off his property. We've got our traditions, we're ready to rock it and we're gonna get going. So when we get into the first day, we're helping Ron set everything up. We're running around in his buggy, throwing chairs in the blinds, getting everything set up, getting little heaters just in case, because you, you never know out there. Now that RJ and Ron have all the stands ready to go, an eager group of hunters with their traditions muzzle loaders in hand are ready to get out into the field early the next day. As a bow hunter, there's something about muzzleloader hunting that, that is just inviting. You know, you get one shot and you've got to make that shot count. And we as bow hunters understand that. The hunt for whitetails continues at the Raboot residence, and the crew takes to the field hoping to fill some tags. All right, let's go do this, bud. 
Well, Ron told me I needed to go to my favorite spot, and that's where I needed to go get set up for my hunt, and that's exactly what I did. Oh, it's a cold one here in Kentucky. I have my hot coffee. We've got the Mr. Eater going. It says it's 32 degrees outside, and it feels like 24. It is frosty out here this morning. So we're set up. This is actually my first day of going out hunting. I've been hanging out with the girls, so it's time I get busy. We need to put some more meat in the freezer. We saw a deer. They just weren't close enough for me to take with my traditions. We spotted some does off in the distance, but all in all, we were just waiting for them to come a little bit closer. Meh. 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 Nothing is close enough with this, so we're gonna go ahead and pack it up, get out of here, and um, prepare to maybe we'll go out early this afternoon instead, because there's another front coming through tonight. Chance of sleet and rain and snow, so maybe they'll be moving early this afternoon and we could get one as they're going from food to bedding or whatever. Keep our fingers crossed. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this out. Excited for what the afternoon has in store, Vicky relocates and is guided by Hoppy Kemper of Osceola Outfitters. Wait a minute. We're in Kentucky, not Florida. Sorry, Hop. Anyway, anticipation is high as Vicky moves on to the newsstand, which has seen plenty of recent activity. Vicky soon finds out this newsstand does not disappoint. Right off the bat, the area is brimming with activity. We just got out in the blind here in Kentucky, my first afternoon hunting. It's muzzle odor season. And, I mean, this morning we saw some deer, nothing close enough to even take a shot at. But this afternoon we weren't out here for five minutes, we were still sitting up. And a whole bunch of deer come out of that timber in front of us. We had five bucks and like five or six does. They milled around, they did a little sparring. There's truly nothing like having a warm, home-cooked meal after a long day sit in the stand and being able to share it with the people who matter most, people you can call family, whether they're related by blood or not. We hunt, we harvest deer, but we also have land that we manage for agricultural purposes. And the people, I think we have to reverse that Bambi syndrome where people don't see deer as a stuffed animal. They see it as vermin because in, in like Western Kentucky or where we're at, they're vermin. Yeah, they, they, they're destructive. They, to are, they are destructive. They're destructive from a, a proper, personal property standpoint with automobile collisions. They cause a lot of injury. They cause a lot of damage. Um, every year, but, but also from a, a row crop 
agricultural practice, they, they take a lot yeah. out of our fields uh, that cuts in the profit margin of not only the farmer, uh, but also the landowner that may be uh, operating on shares. shares. In speaking with the, the farmers here, the amount of damage they do is, a, is, is really a function of the shape of the field. Um, is what they've told me is because they go anywhere from 20 to 50 percent. If you got a long, narrow field, exactly those right. edges get hammered. And mm -hmm. what people need to realize is that the cost goes down the food chain, so to speak. And that you know, if you guys are cleaning up a bunch of vehicle accidents, that's going to impact everybody's insurance. I mean, the insurance companies aren't in the business to lose money, mm -hmm. so they're going to pass on their risk to somebody else. And right. risk is uh, probably the greatest vehicle risk here. Uh, it's your guys' area, but it is are most of your collisions deer related? Yeah, I'm on my second cruiser already yeah. for the department. Yeah, I've hit seven. And we get the calls all the time to to remove the the carcass from the road for that, and, and again, it takes time away from active patrol or anything else that we should be doing. And now we've got to remove a dead carcass out of the road to to avoid uh, injury or accident. The calls, uh, I think. I would probably average during the the rut season probably I'd say four a week would be fairly accurate for uh, deer collision. So it's uh, definitely probably this time of year I get worried about uh, you all as you're driving emergency response mode to calls for service, especially from a period of about September through uh, because January rut. because of the rut. So what I've seen here in this area is deer are very prone to population swings, high and low. And obviously the higher the population, the more the vehicle accidents and the more crop damage and all that. And if we don't control that population through hunting, Mother Nature controls it through disease. As Theodore Roosevelt once said, in a civilized and cultivated country, wild animals only continue to exist at all when preserved by sportsmen. Having always been stewards of the land, the Ciencerulos approach every hunt, big or small, with responsible management practices in mind, ultimately providing not just a better environment for the game, but a better future for the next generation. All right, we're running a little late, um, but Eddie and I are going to a, we call it the Lower White Farm, and um, I got my traditions muzzleloader. This blind is set up with the way the winds are shifting right now. We, we don't have our bow stand sets for these winds, but we do have muzzleloader. And in here in Kentucky with Ron and Lisa, we got the traditions out. So with my traditions, I am loaded, cocked, locked, and ready to go. You know, we're sitting in this blind and and we're looking and we're starting to slowly but surely get some deer movement. And isn't it crazy, and you've all witnessed it, where all of a sudden you could be sitting there for hours and then that, that clock just turns on. And the next thing you know, you see in movement here, 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 and you start seeing all these deer movement or whatever animal you're after, and it's just boom. And well, we were in the right place at the right time. I'm watching these does and all of a sudden behind the does, I'm looking at this great buck and he's slowly coming down this hedgerow and I'm like, oh yeah, baby, this is gonna happen, but I better just take the breathing in and remember to squeeze that trigger and watch that tradition do what it does.
Look at him. Oh, you can't get a more perfect date. Here in Kentucky with Ron and Lisa, Hoppy, Susan, Vicky, RJ, Eddie, Brandon, and myself. We're going hunting, Ralph and I. This should be good. Everybody's ready to go except for us and our windshields iced over. I can't see, but we're going anyway. I'll show you how we do it in Florida. He's pretty darn noisy. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> you have unloaded all yeah. of your muzzle loader stuff. You've, <laughs> you've like slammed on the gun. You have. We, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Keep, keep, I had a little accident. <laughs> drop, drop my box out. A little accident. I had a little accident. Drop my bullets on the floor, and he gets all bent out of shape. What else did you drop? Like all the things. <laughs> the ground's frozen too, but let's go. Is that blood right there? Yep. And, uh, right, right there. Look at. Oh yeah. Right. Oh look. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah. Lay yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the exit hole. I hit her low. I told you I thought I was a little bit forward when I pulled the trigger. And you know, I had ranged a bunch of that early. She could have been a little over 100 yards, but I felt, when I pulled the trigger, I felt forward on her, but we got her. And, and after you like spilled everything out in the blind and you know because it was bumped me my, and made my me opportunity was next yeah all right put that camera away so yeah, let's can get scare this deer out of, out, of, out of the woods for ralph but just so everybody knows you know it's yeah it's my turn it's my turn it was just and i was really being quiet and patient and but no my hand oh cold. crap <laughs> ron hoppy i don't give a dang what you do to me anymore I'm a little Italian from Chicago. <laughs> I am gonna get even. Let me tell you something. Congratulations, everybody. But more than anything, that's what it's about. You know, we've always been off since day one. And I mean, when we started hunting together, you and yep. I, and then with RJ, it's always been about family experience, right. that camaraderie, bringing everybody together, showing what hunters are really all about because they are the true conservationists. And Ron and Lisa, thank you for your hospitality, for letting us all come down there and hang with you guys in Kentucky, because that's pretty awesome. You guys are some really special people. Absolutely. We love you to death. So thank you for making your choice. The choice. We'll see you guys next week.